Yes. While I have this time, I'd like to make this announcement. 2024, the high school graduates, the Flag Chapel Memorial and Peyton B. Cook scholarship applications will be available immediately following church services on 421-24. If you need any different, uh, additional information, please contact any of the scholarship committee members. The committee members are Sister Diane Bentley, Sister Darlene Hanbury, Sister Sarah McNair, Sister Barbara Ward, Deacon Eugene Warren, and Sister Martha Williams. That's for the scholarship issue. Now, you have certain little things you have to go by and you have to pick up if you want to be eligible. Well, I'm also so, but I want to reiterate we're having a meeting next Sunday, hopefully, with the Royal Ambassadors. We have a lot of good things in store for them. And I want you to just try to get them to church. Uh, I went to a track meet yesterday in Lawrenceville, and I, I know it was at least about, about 2,000 people there. A lot of people, but we can go out to a sporting event, a concert, but we can't get our kids in church. Something's wrong with that picture. So again, help us get them in. Um, we have a special little thing we want to present for them and get them lined up to get some summer things, trips going for them, visit different places. I want to take this opportunity to welcome uh, our new boys football coach at the Baldwin High School program, his sister, Brother Patterson. And he has his family with him. <laughs> and uh, I want to give you a chance to say something. I want to introduce him to the community as well as this church and other churches, but uh, he's staying with us. Good All right, thank you, sir. All right, thank you, sir. I see this wife, a real quiet lady, you know, she got her head down like the so good. That's all right. But uh, we just want to just say thank you and welcome to, welcome to Baldwin County. And he's hit the road running. How many of you remember Ken Thomas? Anybody remember Ken Thomas? The Thomas family? Well, Ken was his coach down in, in, uh, down in Camden County when he was in school. So when he told me Ken was his coach, I said, well, I, I know you okay then. Because see, Ken don't play, the, he don't play cards with him. He just, he's straight up forward, a good man. And he's still principal at one of the schools down there. He comes here every once in a while when he's up in this area. But again, thank you. And thank you for coming. And we just welcome you. Anything we can do for you, just let us know. We're now going to ask the Dickens to come forward again and do another part in which you all can take part in the ceremonies. Uh, offering, tithes and offerings. You know, I'm not going to preach about Malachi, Malachi, that's Deacon Johnson, I'm saying. But do what you need to do and do what you are ordered to do by God. And I, again, I, I'm always a witness that if you do for him and do to him the things that he ordered us to do, your life will be a lot much more pleasant. He will open up the doors of windows of heaven that you won't even have room to receive. We're going to ask the choir to give us a selection as they start the offering. for my life. I'm running for 
for my life. I'm a running for my life. I'm a running for my life. I'm a running for my life. If anybody asks you, what's the matter with me? Just tell them that I'm saved, sanctified, holy ghost filled, by baptized. I got Jesus on my side, I'm running for my life. Running for, oh, I'm praying for my life. 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 If anybody asks you, my Lord, what's the matter with me? Just tell them that I'm saved, sanctified, holy God, feel my baptized. I got Jesus on my side, running for my life, running for my life. Oh, I'm singing for my life. 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 If anybody asks you, mm -hmm, what's the matter with me? What's the matter with me? Just tell them that I'm saved. Drink a fire of Holy Ghost filled by baptized. I got. Jesus on my side, running for my life, running for my life. Oh, I'm shouting for my life. 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 If anybody at you. Mm -hmm. What's the matter with me? What's the matter with me? Just tell them that I'm saved. But holy God feel my baptized. I got Jesus on my side. Running for my life. Running for my life. Oh, I'm running for my life. I'm praying for my life. I'm praying for my life. I'm singing for my life. I'm singing for my life. I'm shouting for my life. I'm shouting for my life. If anybody asks you, well, what's the matter with me? What's the matter with me? Just tell them that I'm saved, sanctified. Holy God, feel my baptized. I got Jesus on my side. Running for my life. Running for my life. Oh, <laughs> 
with it. My mind's made up. No room, no vacancies. I'm all filled up. That's why the spirit me, and that's the reason I'm so loud. Yeah. My heart is sick. My mind's made up. No room, no vacancies. I'm all filled up. Y'all ought to get us quiet, big hand. Glory to God. It's sounding real good in here this morning. Thank God for every last one of you who thought enough of the Lord to come into his house today. Come on, give yourselves a big hand. <laughs> Amen. Y'all feel all right? Mm, it is in the deep. It is. Wonderful to still be on this side of glory. It didn't have to be this way, you know. Could have been the other way. Everybody who was here last week didn't make it back this week. Somebody laid down last night, didn't get up this morning. But we are here. And I thank God that he thought enough of us to let our golden moments run on a little while longer. Amen. Amen. I've already had church. I don't know about y'all. <laughs> Say yeah! Hallelujah! <laughs> well, we gotta pray. We gotta pray. We gotta keep on praying. I thank God for for hearing our prayers. All of my noonday prayers, just go ahead and clap for the Lord one time. My noonday prayers. Hallelujah. 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 It's not quite noon today, but we're going to pray right now. This is a good time to pray. I'm, I'm going to ask Reverend Boone to pray for us this morning because I just feel, I felt her spirit when she came in the pulpit this morning. She just felt like she had a prayer in her. Amen. Glory to God. And you may need prayer today, and I'm going to invite you down to the altar. This is altar call time, and if you feel the need to, to bring a burden to the Lord, come on down here. Turn it over to Jesus and let him fix it for you. He'll do it, won't he? Yes, he will. He will fix it for you. Amen. Amen and amen. Glory be to his holy name. Mm. Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning thanking you. Father God, we thank you for allowing us to be here this morning. And Father God, we come standing in the need of prayer. Oh, yeah. Father God, we ask you to just continue to pour out your blessings upon this church house this morning. Yes, Lord. 
Father God, we come lifting up the names that's on the sick list, the, no, the names that we may not know. We come lifting up uh, uh, Deacon Collins. We come lifting up uh, uh, Sister Warren. We come lifting up Deacon Warren. We come lifting up Sister Tanya. We come lifting up Father God, Sister Bayman. Father God, we come lifting up the ones who we know. But Father God, we know that you are a healer. So the names might not be called, but Father God, you know the ones that need to be healed this morning. Oh, yes, you do. Father God, whatever they're standing in the need of healing for, Father God, heal them, Father God, because we know you as a healer. Father God, we know you as a weight maker. Father God, we know you. Father God, we know you. And because of that, we ask asking, Father God, to let your healing power flow in this place just today, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Let your healing power flow in the ones that need to be healed. Now, Father God, whatever the healing is, mentally, Father God, physically, Father God, emotionally, Father God, financially, Father God, whatever the healing may be, Father God, do it for them this morning in the name of Jesus. Father God, we come trusting your word. And Father God, you said we can ask. Father God, you said we can ask. We come asking this morning. Do it for us, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Father God, we thank you. We thank you, Father God. We lift our pastor up to you, Father God. Give him a word for your people, Father God. Continue to pour out your blessings on him. Father God, continue to lead and guide him. And give him a word for your people, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Father God, we thank you. Father God, we thank you this morning for all the prayer warriors that's in the house this morning, Father God. We thank you. And Father God, because of that, we're going to say we trust your word. Your word said it. We're going to do it. Your word said it, we're going to believe it. So, Father God, we come believing it this morning in the name of Jesus. Father God, open doors that needs to be opened. Father God, renew minds. Father God, in the name of Jesus. Father God, we thank you. We thank you, Father God. We thank you. We just come this morning saying, do it, Father God. Do it, Father God. Do it in the name of Jesus. Do it, Father God, in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, we thank God. Amen. Before we do this next song, I have a t- uh, testimony to everyone. And it happened at the prayer time one day last week. It was some static going on and somebody said i rebuke satan do you know the static stopped and i'm i'm sitting there looking man what happened but he just said i rebuke satan and the static stopped now if you heard that particular day you know what i'm talking about piggyback on what real said praise god you know we often hear people say and 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 and, and praise god that they don't look like what they've been through, praise God. But when I tell you I stand before you a living testimony, praise God, there is nothing that my God can't do. There were times, church, I literally felt like I was losing my mind. But God, praise God, when I watched my parents suffer, but God, but you know, prayer works. My children tease me about my excitement for God. She said, Mama, do you always have to yell? I said, you know, we yell at those basketball games, praise God. We, we yell at those track meets, praise God. So why can't we share the same enthusiasm for our God, praise God. So I'm not yelling because I'm angry. I'm yelling because I'm grateful for what God has brought us through, for what God has brought us to, and for what God is yet doing in all of our lives. Praise God. The song simply says, thank you. It's a testimony for all those things that he's done, all those things that he's doing, and all those things that we are yet believing he's doing right now. The song simply says, thank you, Lord. Thank 
Tragedies are commonplace. All kinds of diseases, people are slipping away. Economy is down, people can't get enough pay. But as for me, all I can say is thank you, Lord, for all you've done for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Folks without home, they're out in the street. And the drug habits, some say they just can't be. Murders, robbers, no place seems to be safe. But you've been my protection every step of the way. And I want to say thank you, Lord, for all you've done for me. Yeah, 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 yeah. It could have been me. With no food or on drugs, with no home, it could have been me without a friend or just another number with a tragic end. But you didn't see fit to let none of these things be. Every day with your power, you keep on, you keep on keeping me. And I want to say thank you, Lord, for all you. Hallelujah. Let's give the choir a big hand. Thank the Lord. I just want to thank you. Glory to his holy name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. Y'all feel all right? 
don't, we can go back to singing some more now, you know. All right, all right. We do have another service this afternoon over at Terrence Chapel. And um, I'm praying that we'll have a pretty good little following over. The choir's going to come, the deacons are going to go, and anyone who cares to go with us, come on. We're going to celebrate Reverend Jimmy Reeves Jr.'s anniversary this afternoon. So it should be a joyous time. And now there's one thing that I do know about these folk over there is that they can cook. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. <laughs> so, so if you don't want to buy your own dinner today, I know y'all didn't cook. Come on and go with us. I would just about expect Mother Reeves to have a mighty fine layout over there today. The old folk used to call it a spread. Amen. Somebody in here know what I'm talking about. Amen. So I'm not going to prolong our time. Thank God for these ministers. Thank God for Reverend Bentley who gets us started every Sunday morning. Reverend Boone, thank you for coming in here, praying for us, and thank our officers for what they do. They, they are essential. We thank God for them, for the mothers, for all of our uh, choir members, our ushers, our auxiliaries, wherever you may be, and whatever it is that you're doing, it adds to the kingdom of heaven. We thank God for you, to all of our Visitors, we're grateful that God led you this way this morning, and I hope that something will happen that'll encourage you to come back and be with us. We'll make, we will keep you. You know, we 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 kind of like keeping folk who just show up. So y'all, if you don't have a church home, come on in here. We'll put you to work doing something for the Lord. We're grateful that the Lord has brought Brother Brian. Uh, so it's Barbara and her family back in here this morning. It's good to see you. God bless you. Sister Margaret, God bless you. I thank God for you. Another prayer heard and a body healed. Thank God. All right. And for all of you, we're just grateful that you have chosen to be with us this morning. And I pray that you'll pray with me as we go into our word. Now, we're going over and look at uh, 1 John chapter 3. First John, not St. John, but First John. Yeah, that's on over near the end of the Bible. You'll find him over there. First John chapter 3. I'm going to read uh, three verses uh, beginning at verse 1. 1 John chapter 3. And if you don't have it, don't worry about it. I got it. Chapter 3, verse 1 says, Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knows us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that has this hope in him purifies himself, even as he is pure. Amen. Amen. For our time here this morning, I'm going to use for subject one word, saints. S-A-I-N-T-S. And I'm not talking about that group out of New Orleans. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> we thank God for the saints. Praise ye the Lord. Um. The Bible tells us who and what saints 
are. It does. <laughs> I'm almost certain that if I asked, our ideas of what a saint is would differ, even from the scriptures. I pray that this little short message, as I hasten to close, that this little short message will, will be some kind of enlightenment as to who the saints are and what saints do. If I should ask you this morning, what you think a saint is, think to yourself the answer that you would give me. You don't have to tell me out loud. Just, just think to yourself. What is a saint? Some of us would probably say, well, Reverend, we're talking about somebody who's holy. Perhaps. Someone else might say we're talking about someone who's done some extraordinary things. Or perhaps someone who has uh, done little to nothing wrong in life. That sounds like a saint, doesn't it? Someone who's considered special. Amen. I like that one. Someone who's considered special. Well, let me tell you that the most celebrated saint on this planet is one that we call St. Patrick. Amen. Every year on March 17th, the world comes together to celebrate St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> and ironically, I think we're yet to celebrate down at the church house. Okay, y'all looking at me real funny. <laughs> Am I right about it? Most of the time when we celebrate St. Patrick, we do it down at the pub <laughs> or down at the club or maybe even have a street party. St. Patrick. And most of us have never even considered what he did. Live and learn. St. Patrick. Most of the folk get drunk on St. Patrick's Day and don't have a clue about what they are celebrating. <laughs> Other than some green bill, some clover leaves, and leprechauns. <laughs> Am I right? Well, let me, let me tell you, the celebration of St. Patrick's Day is due to St. Patrick having converted most of Ireland to Christianity. One man. That's something to celebrate. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Most of Ireland is of Christian affiliation because of St. Patrick. And they celebrate it. Now, you can go out and you can tell everybody else that you know what St. Patrick's Day is all about. You know why you celebrate now. And perhaps maybe you can convince somebody to come on down to the church next year on March 17th, or you can join them in the street with their party. 
Get you some green bill. <laughs> Saints, you see, are essential to the Christian faith. God chose St. Patrick for his mission, just, just as he chose St. Peter, St. John, St. Matthew, St. James, all of the other saints for the mission that he placed them on. He chose St. Patrick. This is the way that God has chosen to grow his church. Jesus is the foundation and he's the center of Christianity. He built the church. He founded the church. And he sent a saint to touch you so that you'll see the need for him as your savior and as a Christian with love inside of you. God is being seen through you. Think about that for a moment. You say you're a Christian. If you're a Christian, then Christ is in you because you received him as your Lord and your Savior. And people who see you see Christ in you. That's your influence. And that makes you a saint. So, St. James 1 and 22 says that we should not just be hearers of the word only, deceiving ourselves, but we should also be So, saints, God expects a little more of us than perhaps we are giving him. Who have you influenced to go to church or to receive Christ as their Lord and Savior? We can't be so hard on St. Patrick that he get everybody drunk because he led them to Christ. And Christ is not against drinking. What you talking about, preacher? <laughs> Christ ain't against drinking. Christ. Hallelujah. We got one Christian in the house. <laughs> he said, Jesus turned water into wine. It was his first miracle. He didn't say try to drink up all the wine. <laughs> but he said a little bit is good for the stomach come on now <laughs> y'all loosen up just a little bit on me this morning <laughs> so a saint listens to God and then he does what God says for us to do and so throughout the New Testament, from the book of Acts through Revelation, we see that followers of Jesus were referred to as saints. Followers of Jesus are referred to as saints. And, and these were not just special followers of Jesus. They ain't just talking about Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and the rest of the guys that you see in the Gospels. Everyday common people. Just like you and I. We too are saints. That needs to resonate with you just for a minute or two. We are saints in the eyes of God. But you say, hold on a minute. I know you ain't saying that the person said next to me is no saint. <laughs> I might be a saint. <laughs> but, but compared to some of the sins that, that, that this person has committed, 
I know something is wrong with this picture. Well, now, didn't we all see it? That's what Paul said. We've all sinned. Come and shout of the glory of God. Every last one of us, even the holiest of what you would think would be called a saint. Ain't no more saint than you are. You, 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 you born again. Filled with the Holy Ghost and sanctified. Hallelujah, glory to God. Everybody has sinned. In fact, every Christian has sinned in the eye and in the eyes of God, all sin is equal. Come on now. So if you just cheated on your taxes, <laughs> Ma tax day, ain't it? <laughs> ain't gonna be a lot of lies told to Ma. <laughs> If you just told a little white lie, or talk to somebody in a in a bad way, or cuss them out, you know. God sees you no better or no worse than the person who committed adultery or committed murder, stole something from somebody. Sin. Well, I'm finally getting y'all to preach this with me this morning. Huh? Uh, you know, y'all kind of tight. Y'all holding back on me this morning. Yeah, I know that's kind of hard on you, you know, to get to thinking about it like that because you're thinking that your sin isn't as bad as Deacon, Deacon's sin. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> yes, it is. Because all sin separates us from God. Absolutely. And being perfect, thank God, is not a criteria to be classed as a saint. I, I thought y'all might want to hear this today. Because God gave it to me to give you, and I'm going to give it to you anyway, so you may well be ready to hear it. I know sometimes, you know, sometimes we don't want to be saints when we start sneaking. <laughs> You can't see me, can you? <laughs> Hallelujah. You can't hide from God. You just hide from the preacher. But he ain't the one that you got to answer to. He is. Hallelujah. See, there are a whole lot of folks in the Bible who, who had some problems too. And some of their problems were worse than any problem that you have ever had with sin. You don't want me to start calling the roll on them now. Mm -mm, mm -mm, I ain't got time to do that today. But I, but I, can, call, I can call the roll. That was some, some scoundrels in, in this Bible. They were rough. You ain't never did some of the things that they did. Uh -huh. <laughs> so let's get us a perspective on what a saint really is. From Romans 1 and 7. This is what King James said in his Bible, in his version. He said, to all in Rome who are loved by God and called to be saints. Being a saint has nothing to do with what you do. Nothing. Let me say that another way. Being a saint does not start with what you do. It starts with what God says. And God says, I love you. Oh, hallelujah. That's that you should have got your shout on right there. Isn't it good to know there's somebody who honestly loves you? And ain't nothing nobody can do about it. God 
loves you. And God says, I call you to live your life for me. So for you, when did this experience take place? For many of us, I know you're going to say at baptism. I know you're going to say that. For others, it was somebody that shared Christ with them and it started right there. So how do you experience him now? When you read your Bible? When you worship him in spirit and in truth? When you share God's word with somebody else who feels where you are? Hallelujah. When someone comes and give you a hand when you're beside the road broke down or your tire just went flat and you sitting here wondering, Lord, how am I going to get this tire fixed? I got on my suit. Deacon Warren and I were coming from South Carolina one day in no hunt out there and we broke down beside the road because we had a flat tire. And both of us had our suits on because we had just come from a funeral. So we got out, popped the trunk, started throwing stuff outside the road, and in about two seconds, somebody pulled up behind us. He said, get back. I got this. Amen. Ain't that what he said, D? <laughs> but, but, but there was some several other cars who had gone on past us. Now, this boy was a European-American. He, he, he had no obligation to do anything for us. But let me tell you what he said. He said, stand back because this is my blessing. That's a Christ, That's a saint. <laughs> In my eyes, he's a saint. He's a saint. Being a saint relies on God and, and being exposed to the love of Christ. So, so what do we do about sin? Well, one of our great forefathers, Martin Luther, uh, after studying the scriptures, recognized that every follower of Jesus is both a saint and a sinner. A saint and a sinner. But there's one difference. Saints are forgiven. Somebody wrote a song one time that said, we fall down. But we get up. For a saint. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Saint is just a sinner who fell down and got back up. All Christians are sinners and saints at the same time. We are sinners because of what we do. And we are saints because of what God is doing. That's why it's so important for us to keep praying. Not just that midday every day, but pray all day. Jesus said, pray without ceasing. Hallelujah. In other words, saints recognize that we rely on Christ's death on the cross for our eternal future in the kingdom of heaven. That's what it's all about. Jesus died so that I have the right to enter into the kingdom of heaven. Jesus declared to us in St. John that he was going away to prepare a place for us, that he would come again and receive us unto himself. He said, in my father's house. Many mansions. And if it wasn't the truth, I wouldn't tell you. God doesn't only make saints, but he continued to grow us. 
so that we will live as saints. That's what I like about the, the gospel of Jesus Christ. God will help us to distinguish when we are being saints and when we are acting a fool. We know. Y'all seen those little babies, little toddlers, when they know that they're getting ready to do something wrong and they look up at you with those big milk eyes. I'm finna do something wrong. <laughs> you know better. If a baby knows better, I know y'all grown folk know better. <laughs> Just one or two more little passages of scripture and I'm gonna be done. You know, Revelation chapter 7 verses 9 through 11 talks about this, this multitude in white coming out of great trials and tribulations and they're coming to the throne of God to worship and to praise him. Who are they? That's what one of the elders around the throne who are they? One of the other said, these are they that came out of great tribulation. Gene Warren, Larry Martin, Betty Hill. Great tribulation. These are they. Look at them. Sinners who have washed their robes in the blood of the Lamb, and now they are saints of God. We're God's children. God's children. And ain't nothing nobody can do about it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to his holy name. I get to thinking sometimes about how God, how good God really is. You, you know, we, 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 we know that he's good, but we don't really give him full credit for how good he is. I don't have to go to hell for all of those things that I've done in my past. <laughs> Y'all ought to be telling him thank you too. <laughs> He's already thrown that into his deep sea of forgetfulness. It'll never rise to bear witness before, before you, not even at the judgment bar. It's done. You are forgiven. Now, you are saints of God. Saints of God. Saved by grace. Bless, Jesus says, are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be confident. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. We're talking about saints of God. Blessed are they who are persecuted for righteousness' sake. Because the prophets were persecuted also. So the scripture says, be extremely excited. For God knows you. And you've got a place in the kingdom of God.
we've done just about all we can do here. And with all that we've done wrong, God has crossed it out. And through the blood of Jesus, there's a check mark. Because he did it. He did it for you. Jesus hung, bled, and died. And the scripture says on the third day morning that God raised him up from the dead with all power. Hallelujah. And because he did, you have a seat in the kingdom. I have a seat in the kingdom. All of God's children have a seat in the kingdom. Now, there may be somebody here this morning who doesn't know the Lord in the free parts of sin. That may be somebody who, who's looking for a seat in the kingdom. And there's still a seat left. If you turn it over to the Lord, he'll give you that seat. So I'm going to open the doors of the church by letter, Christian experience, or as a candidate for baptism. However you want to come, the Lord is waiting on you, saint. If you don't consider yourself a saint already, we'll make you one in, in one minute. All you got to do is just turn it over to him. Take my hand. Give God your heart. The doors are open. May be your last chance. Will you accept him today? accept you. Come on down.
Hallelujah. 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 We've done as the Lord has commanded, and we find Brooks. <laughs> Amen. Now, this is Sister Barbara Ward's grandbaby. Amen. You see that smile on her face? Now, that's a happy grandma. Just like this mom and dad. <laughs> These are the wards. And I am so happy to receive Brooke into our church. Amen. Amen. Brooke, do you believe Jesus died for your sins and that God raised him from the dead? You believe that? Oh, hallelujah. That, that just about seals the deal right now. That just about seals the deal. And you want to be baptized? Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We got to get our tub ready, uh, Brother Deacons. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We're going to baptize you. I'm going to extend to you the right hand of fellowship today. And when we baptize you, the whole church is going to extend the right hand of fellowship to you. Is that all right? All right. Mama. Yes. God bless you, darling. Y'all, 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 y'all gonna make sure that the baby stay in the church. Oh, yes. yeah. Brian. <laughs> coming back. You coming back? We got some new dedication. Come on. Oh, I'm coming back. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. I know he's still running around out there somewhere in the world. Hallelujah, hallelujah. They've had an illustrious career, and, and it's good to have you back around Millersville. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, we'll let you know when that day is, and we're going to get you baptized. I think we got some more folk to get baptized, too. A couple, two, three. Okay. So we're going to make that happen. And, uh, yeah, yes, 31. Amen. So that's going to happen pretty quickly. So we'll let you know exactly when the date is, and you can be ready to go down. Everybody sing it. You can have a seat. Everybody sing it. Everybody sing it. Amen. Sing it over. Sing it over. Sing it over, hey, amen. Hey. Let the church sing. Let the church sing. Hey. Let the church sing. Hey, amen. Hey. One more time now, hey. one more time, sing it one more time, amen, amen. Come on, put your hands together for Jesus. Glory to his holy name. Amen. A brand new saint. Hallelujah. 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 Heaven smiles every time Satan loses somebody from this battlefield. And that's what it is. It's a battlefield. It's a battle every day. Battle for souls. And God just got one more. Praise his holy name. Amen. If you feel like you're a saint, go ahead and clap for Jesus. <laughs> now, you know, they, they, uh, they, they just celebrate St. Patrick's Day one day a year. Don't let that one slide too far over your head. <laughs> Amen. Just, just one day per year. And 
not everybody drinks green beer. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm kind of waiting on our covenant. Do we have it? All right. We, we may have to pat. Here we go. There we go. Amen. Usually we have the covenant on the screen, but I don't know that you heard, but um, uh, Deacon Collins is still in the hospital. He, he had some emergency surgery on Wednesday, Thursday. He's doing good. Thank God. Thank God. So we'll be asking you to continue your prayers for him. Pray for a speedy recovery because we, we do need him here in this sanctuary on Sunday mornings. And his wife needs him every day at home. Amen. Need one more? Here we go. We good. We good. We good. Okay. All right. I think we're about ready now. As soon as our choir get get one, I'm going to ask you to go ahead and stand. We, uh, we're going to read our covenant responsively. I will read the first paragraph, and you the second, and we'll read the last paragraph together. All right. Having been led as we believe by the Spirit of God to receive the Lord Jesus as our Savior and on the profession of our faith, having been baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, we do now in the presence of God, angels, and this assembly most solemnly and joyfully enter into covenant with one another as one body in Christ. We also engage to maintain family and secret devotion, to study diligently the word of God, to religiously educate our children, to seek the salvation of our kindred and acquaintance, to walk circumspectly in the world, to be kind and just to those in our employ and faithful in the service we promise others, endeavoring in the purity of heart and goodwill toward all men to exemplify and commend our holy faith. When we remove from this place, we engage as soon as possible to unite with some other church where we can carry out the spirit of this covenant and the principles of God's word. Amen. You may be seated.
And on that evening, when the disciples had gathered themselves together in the upper room and our Lord was with them, he took bread and he broke it and he said, this is my body that shall be given for you. Take and eat ye all of it. And likewise, he poured a cup and he said that this is my blood, the blood of the New Testament, the blood that shall be shed for the remission of your sins. Drink ye all of it. For as often as you partake of my body and my blood, you'll show forth my suffering and my death until I return unto you. And then he admonished them. He said, be careful of the manner by which you partake. For if you eat and drink unworthily, you'll eat and drink damnation unto your own soul. For which cause many are sickly among you and many of you are asleep. Then he prayed that nobody would be left out. God hears and answers prayer right now. The only thing that we need to do to make certain that we're in good stead with him and that he, he, we do not drink and eat damnation to our souls is to ask God to forgive us for any trespasses that we've made against anybody. Cleanse thyself. We can't always answer for somebody else, but we will answer for ourselves. Jesus was there in the flesh on that particular day, and he prayed. He blessed that bread and that wine and his disciples. He's here today in the flesh, and he is still in the blessing business. Hallelujah. Still hearing prayer. And forgiving those who ask. I'm going to ask Deacon Martin if he'll lead us in prayer and ask God's blessings upon us and these sacraments. Amen. Let us pray. God, we come this morning saying thank you. Thank you for all that you've done, Heavenly Father. As we be obedient and do this in the remembrance of Jesus, we ask you to change these symbols of his body, this bread, and the symbols of his symbol of his blood, this wine. And in the changing, Heavenly Father, help us to change our hearts, to love one another more, Heavenly Father. As we remember Jesus and the sacrifice he made, Heavenly Father, we thank you now. Make us worthy to be partakers. In the name of Jesus, amen. 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 Hallelujah. And it is done. Amen.
after they had supped, they sang a hymn and they went out to a mountain. I don't know about your mountain, but we still have our mountains. Some a little higher than others, some a little farther around, but God will see you to the other side if you go with him. This is our hymn of benediction. Let us stand with fellowship and go in peace. God bless you. God keep you. See you tomorrow at noon. For those who join us on the line. I'm on my way home, Lord. On my way home, Lord. I'm on my way home, Lord. Come on and fix it, Jesus. Fix it like you said you would. I have to cry sometime, Lord.